Good morning, Our World. Welcome back to another episode of Our World Talk. Drum roll, please. We have Ms. Gia Arvin, Florida Realtors President. How are you, Gia? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Nice to see you, as always. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So uh, we're going to kick this podcast off with um, a very serious question. Our association, commonly known as Our World, has two members who are leaders on your executive team at Florida Realtors. So I just want to open the podcast by asking what makes Chuck Bonfiglio and Jeffrey Levine unique assets to your team and who is the better of the two? Well, who is the better of the two? Well, I lose no matter what on that one. But let's talk about their assets first. Okay. So Chuck, I love his history, obviously with his dad being a president of Florida Realtors yep. previously. He has a very unique perspective on how things work. So our logistics, our inner workings. Um, so I think he brings a valuable piece when it comes to that. Okay. Obviously, he's got a huge passion. Um, being a family guy, being an independent brokerage, multi-generational, I right. think brings a great perspective as well as uh, being having a spouse in the business with him. right? So I'm like that as well. So I can appreciate that and all that comes with it. Uh, and then Jeff, what his mind for the MLS is incredible. And so when we talk about things, he goes, well, have you thought of it like this? Or did you think of that? Or I would ask this question. Right. So he brings a very unique perspective that we had a whole, we were missing that person on the team and he's filled it out amazingly. So who do I like more? Well, that's loaded. <laughs> you know that Jeff and I have nicknames for each other now. Okay. We're mom and dad on the team. Okay. And then the other three are our boys, oh. you know. Um, and also we call each other the bookends because I'm president, he's secretary. Okay. So we definitely, um, he was my biggest surprise, I think. I didn't know Jeff coming in and getting to know him and his personality. I've just completely fallen in love with him. He's awesome. Uh, Chuck, I knew a little bit and he is funny, fun, and we have a great time. So I think they're both um, pretty cool. If I had to pick a favorite, I can't say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll talk offline. Okay. Um, you know what? It's, uh, it's, it's, it, we have suffered, uh, I would say, a loss locally with having Jeff go and move up the ranks now into Florida Realtors. Um, certainly missed having his mind on the Beaches MLS Board of Directors. Um, you are absolutely right. He is uh, a brilliant guy, but... Fortunately enough for me, stepping into the chairman's role for Beaches MLS, um, Jeffrey has never turned down my phone call. So I know that he's always there with all of that knowledge for us. Um, then Chuck, certainly I know that you guys are having a good time every time you get into uh, a meeting with him because um, he's just a, a he's just party in a can. I love Chuck to death. He is. He's such a good guy. Yep. Um, so to, as president of the largest state association in the nation, how freaking cool is that? Um, your role is undoubtedly significant. Uh, has your mission changed at all due to uh, the industry lawsuits, the settlements that are unfolding? Uh, what's on the horizon for us here locally? So I think it's great because as a team, we kind of all have our priorities in line. Mm -hmm. um, so we look at more of a five-year plan versus this year we want to accomplish X, next year Y. We kind of build it out as a team. And so a lot of the initiatives that I was passionate about had been being implemented over the last several years. Okay. So I would say that there was a lot more we were wanting to accomplish on the agenda this year. It's only April, you know, so you never know. Right. But I think that we had to back off a couple of the large ones, right? Uh, in order to really stay steadfast and focused on the lawsuits and all of the changes coming to the industry so that we can train appropriately, right? Right. Um, so one of the ones that I know that Tim and Chuck are both passionate about, which was one of my big passions, was health, health insurance for awesome. our profession. And well, I know that Tim has a unique perspective when it comes to that okay. and has some experience. Uh, so I will tell you that we can't pull off Joanna off of all of the lawsuit stuff, of but course. we were needing her to kind of move forward in that arena. Okay. So I hope that that will continue to be a priority. I think it will, okay. knowing uh, Tim and Chuck, but that is one thing that I think came off the agenda just because everything else filled in. Right, and I, th I think people across the country are all in that same mindset. I mean, it, traditionally as, as a realtor association, we would always put forth five-year plans to do all of our uh, planning, which has now changed from that strategic planning meetings that we would have setting out those multi-year plans to now going more into, uh, instead of strategic planning, more of scenario planning. 
because yep. everything is changing so quickly every single day. We all hear it. We get the news from Inman. We get the news from Riz Media. We hear about it on all the news channels. Um, but certainly things are changing. So I think it's very smart that you guys have pulled back off some of those initiatives so that way you can better place your resources into making sure that what's needed right now today is actually happening. Yeah, I call that my triage plan. Even in my own business, I'm like, okay, what has to happen right now due to industry changes and things going on? So, and I think we don't call it that at Florida Realtors, but that is what I call it internally. And I think that's what we focused on. What is most important to our members right now? Right, a smart way to do it. Uh, So prior to everything unfolding, one of your goals this year was to focus on training needed for this changing climate that we're talking about right now. So the Conveyance to Foreign Buyers Act, the buyer brokerage agreements. Can you let our members know what you have in place and what sort of steps you're taking right now to achieve those goals? Yes. So we uh, get to choose several classes every year that we kind of fund or give scholarships for. Well, NAR stepped up a lot when it came to the ABR designation, right? So um, got mine. Me too. I I just saw that. Congratulations. Congratulations to you as well. So we really focused on the buyer broker agreement specifically and how to use it to your advantage. We've had four webinars so far. Uh, We've had almost 3,000 realtors trained on those webinars. Awesome. We have several more scheduled. So we're really trying to empower the realtors to use Florida Realtors as a resource, take that class, and also pushing it out to the brokers. So we're hoping that they're teaching it internally as well or showing it within their office meetings. Right. We say 3,000. I think it's more like five because people were watching that webinar as an office or in an office meeting or as their association. So maybe one login, but maybe 20 or 30 people watching that. Right. Uh, So that's been a huge initiative. We're going to continue to do those. And the FAQs, I think, have been very helpful when it comes to buyer broker agreements as well. Um, And so we're continuing to update those. We have a presidential advisory group in place. I don't know if you are aware of that, or if you're serving on it. I'm serving on it. That's what I thought, but I didn't (laughs) want to ask that. Um, And so we have the brightest minds across the state looking at all of our forms and saying, what needs to be changed so we can adapt to this changing market? Right. What needs to be updated? What should we be thinking about as professionals? And so as those forms get finished, hurry up, we will will roll those out to our members. And I think that'll be very exciting for them. So if you guys uh, that are listening, watching, uh, have uh, questions about the buyer broker agreement, just know that we are working diligently to make sure that that agreement uh, is completely revamped. It is going to be exactly what you need in order to properly operate your business. But like you said, start training now on how to use those. And I had just had a class in my own office where I was trying to uh, explain to all of my realtors the importance of articulating your value. Because we're hearing reports now and and reading things that are coming out through um, our our real estate news channels uh, that are saying that the buyers themselves are saying, I'm not gonna sign that thing with you just to go and um, look at a property. But what a lot of people don't realize or maybe are planning for is this is going to be mandatory. Learn how to use it, learn how to explain it, learn how to articulate that value so that way you can get people to sign it. 100%. 100%. Get those talking points down now. Absolutely. So it will be natural when it's mandated. Are you using a buyer? Um, are you using a buyer? Um, look, basically like a listing uh, listing package, a, a buyer presentation is what I was trying to go uh, get to. Um, are you using a buyer presentation with your own business right now? I am actually. And we're in the middle of revamping it because we feel like we have to beef that up. Absolutely. Even more so than we had it before. We always had a buyer guidebook, but now it's like a resource manual. Right. We're really bulking that up so we can show the value. Awesome, awesome. Uh, So as you've uh, started to travel across our great state uh, and meet realtors from all walks of life, right now you are on the advocacy tour. Uh, You've got various uh, geographical locations within the state uh, that you're visiting. What is a common denominator that we all have within Florida? Because you're visiting rural communities, you're visiting big cities. Um, What's the most and what's the most prominent contrast as well? So um, contrast is easy. The size right? Our realtor population, no matter what we are. But the the problem, the main problem at every single association is the same. It's insurance when it comes to industry issues. That's what everybody's talking about. In across the entire state, it's the first thing out of the mouth, no matter where I go, whether it's the panhandle, the keys, the center of the state, insurance is an issue. Um, and so they're feeling the pain even in the center of the state. You know, it says 70 miles, basically, right? 
if you're dead center in the state, you're 70 miles to each coast. Right. They're still having insurance issues, right? Wow. Roofs, ACs, water heaters, all of those things. Um, but the size of our associations are different. So I think the way that training is being done, the way that advocacy is being done locally to really get some of those issues, like septic tank issues are a big deal in North Florida. Right. Um, so what are they looking to do as far as advocacy and um, getting the word out on those? The way that they function and the resources that they have are different because they're smaller populations there. Right. Versus, you know, Miami, our world, Orlando, Tampa, Pinellas, they have a lot more resources, a lot more staff, a lot more ability to get um, the word out. So I would say that's the biggest contrast I see within associations and the biggest similarity. Yeah, I noticed that uh, that same contrast when last year when we were doing our advocacy efforts, at, I was uh, on RPMIC and trying to reach out to those smaller associations and say, "Hey, let us be a resource for you. Let us help you. Let us, you know, do, what is it that you need um, in order to advance your advocacy efforts?" And it's so funny because sometimes you call one of these tiny little associations that basically every member of the association is uh, a major investor where you get to some of these larger associations like our world, like Miami, where you've got tons and tons and tons of members, but that advocacy uh, stretch, the fingers don't really get out as far as you would think that they would. All of the information that we pump out to our members um, does not have the effect as those one-on-one -on -one conversations that you get in some of those smaller associations where everybody is involved in the greater good. It's true. And the 80-20 rule is also very prevalent wherever you go. So 20% of the realtor population do about 80% of the total transactions. Right. Um, and so that, you know, we always hear that. Yeah. But it is true no matter where you go throughout the entire state. So, and you have that handful of really engaged volunteers yep. that are involved in everything year after year, no matter what. Um, same across the entire state. Obviously, our world, you guys have a deep bench because you have so many quality people to choose from. Um, but whereas a smaller association might have five or six that are very involved. Right. You guys have 40 or 50, right? Even more. Right. We've got a ton. Yeah. Um, this, so t let's talk about uh, you. You've been a fantastic president for Florida Realtors. Yeah. It's been incredible watching uh, your journey. I hope that you're having uh, an awesome year. I am. I know uh, I, know I am. Um, when did you decide that you wanted to become president of Florida Realtors? So that's a loaded question. I don't know that I ever said I was going to be president of Florida Realtors. In 2008, I was the very first leadership academy for Florida Realtors. Okay. Um, I was 26 years old and I'll never forget it. Stephen David was in the room and we all got Great mentors. Guy. Oh, I love him. We all got mentors and mine was Mike Dooley. Oh, that's okay. who I got partnered with. Stephen David was the chair of Leadership Academy. Okay. And at the end of Leadership Academy, they said, who in this room thinks that they would ever want to be president of Florida Realtors? And I sat there and I half raised the hand, you know, when you do that. <laughs> I mean, I think I would want to. I don't know if I'm ready. Right. And Mike Dooley looked at me and he said, out of everyone in this room, you better raise that hand. And I said, yeah, I do have the passion for it, 100%. Okay. I need to build the skills to get there and I have a long way to go. 26 years old, right? Right out the gate. Right. So I really developed my leadership with Women's Council, my local association. And I think in 2017, I was state president for Women's Council and it clicked. It was like, I love this. It okay. fills me up and I'm able to give back to my profession at the same time. Right. I want to continue to move forward. What's that next step? And so Florida Realtors was it. Well, Women's Council certainly prepared you to be a leader because I see what the ladies and well, the, the men and ladies in Women's Council um, do. And really everything is on you. you it, there's not a huge staff presence. I mean, it, aside from uh, being able to use an association meeting room, I mean, there's, there's really not a whole lot of support. You guys all support each other and make those things happen. And whatever the initiatives are that you guys have, you divvy up the work and you get it done. Yep. My first committee for Florida Realtors, I showed up with my own agenda <laughs> made and printed. Okay. I looked very cute because, you know, Florida Realtors, they do that for you. Yep. They write your agenda, they print it, they bring it. And I said, oh, well, this is how Women's Council taught me. This is how we roll. Right. And so I came with my own agendas, printed, ready to go. Um, just different perspective. Totally different world. Okay. 
Uh, to, obviously, uh, to everybody has some sort of uh, mentor. If you're in leadership, you've been mentored by somebody. Nobody goes at this uh, alone and tries to figure it out on the on them on their own. But um, who is one person that you look up to in real estate, whether that be a previous mentor or somebody who you just think is kicking butt right now? Um, so there's a guy named Robert Morris Jr. He's from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Okay, he's an instructor. And when Scott and I first started in the business, we were about 23 years old. We took CRS 200, which was business planning and systems back then. Okay. And Scott and I were having a great time. We were making a lot of money for young kids, right? Right. And we were spending that money like young kids. Of course kids. you were. We were having a great time. And uh, I took CRS 200 and Robert Morris sat me down and said, can I take you and your husband out to dinner tonight? He said, you have all the potential in the world to do leadership, to be top producers, but you've got to get yourself organized and under control. Financially stable. Correct. No, and no. and he said, we got to start making smart decisions. And so he really set us on this trajectory to be top producers in our market, really get a plan together, a strategic plan for us as individuals to evaluate our finances every year, really look at it like a business and not a job. Right. And so that mindset kind of clicked then for us. And from there on, we doubled our business each year. I moved up in leadership locally. And he checks in on us still to this day. Oh, really? Yep. About once a month, he says, how's it going? Oh, how's cool. it going? And so I would say he's been our steadfast long term when it comes to our business and leadership. Okay. Um, leadership, though, Stephen David, all the way for me. He has always been a huge supporter and always made sure that... Um, you keep the interests, right? The 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 interests of the members, right? Your first and foremost priority, and he always sung that during Leadership Academy, and so I just respect the heck out of him. Crazy amount of integrity with that guy. I mean, yeah. he is so brilliant and never shies away from sharing all the knowledge that he has. So when it comes to leadership, he's definitely my mentor. Okay, good to know. I remember uh, my first year in real estate. It was. Um, I think it was about eight months before I had uh, got my first, I looked very, very young and it took so long to get somebody to trust me and work with me. And once I had, uh, had done that first transaction, then another and another and another and another, and then came tax time. And Surprise. you spending all of that money, you know, cause of course you've got to get the car and the clothes and the this and the that. Mm -hmm. And I was spending, spending, spending. And then the, um, I went and filed my taxes and went, wait a minute, I owe how much? That is insane. Where am I going to get that money from? So I, the second year, had to bust my butt just to pay off my tax bill. And it, you learn very, very quickly how to budget yourself. Yes, you do. And how to how to work on your finances after um, after you get hit with something like that. That was um, certainly eye opening. For sure. Good uh, good on you guys that you learned it uh, earlier than I did. Um, well, well, let's talk about uh, professionalism. What are some things that realtors need to work on in regards to professionalism? So communication, I think, is first and foremost, communication within each other, mm -hmm. between each other and then the public. So right now, I don't know about you, but I can go a whole transaction and almost never speak to the other person. It's text messages. It's um, lots of emails. And sometimes you misinterpret the meaning of those words. They're times. not hearing that inflection in their voice. Yep. Right. So I think the first thing that we can do if we have a problem, pick up the phone have better communication amongst each other. Absolutely. Because when we make each other shine, the public sees us shine. Right. Right. Uh, the second thing for me is probably when I came up, I was taught fix all the problems, make the transaction look seamless. Well, that's devalued us in a lot of ways yep. because the public thinks our job is easy. So instead- Because we tell them that on Facebook. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm a million dollar club and I'm doing this and that. I know. Right? Yeah. So now I tell my customers, I call them, hey, we had a problem this week. It was this. No worries. It's already addressed. And this is how I fixed it. Right. Right. So you're making them aware, not making them worry, but making them aware of issues and explaining how you were the superhero right. in that situation and fix it. And occasionally you're going to have somebody that wants to micromanage you. Of course. That's going to ask you to tell you about the Please tell me about the problem the moment that it happens, mm -hmm. because I want to know that this is going on. It's like. Why would you want to know that that's going on? We're fixing it. It's fine. That's right. That's right. So I think being more transparent about what we do um, will raise our level of professionalism as well right. and raise our value. Uh, and then education. There are so many opportunities for education out there. 
Um, I know that we all have alphabet soup behind our name, right. but it means something to us. I understand that the consumer might not know what those letters mean, but it's given us training to better serve them. Right. And then obviously I pushed for board certified for many, many years. If you're a Florida realtor, get board certified. It's an amazing advantage that we have in Florida that no other state has. A way to level up and make us stand out. So right. if if you're not familiar with it, check it out, floridarealtors.org, uh, board certified. But you can become a Florida realtor board certified agent. Awesome. Yeah. Good news. Um, when you went to, uh, you were talking about communication. And uh, I think one of the things that's important is setting the grounds for how you want to be communicated with at the outside of the transaction, whether that be your customer, whether it be the realtor that's on the other side of the transaction, to let them know, I would appreciate a phone call if there's something going on. Yep. I don't want to get a text message from you. If I call you, please don't return my call with a text message. Call me back. There might be something important that we need to talk about um, that we need to discuss that maybe you don't want to put in writing. Yep. I have the phone. Give me a phone. You know, to let, Let's have a conversation about how we're going to get to the finish line, how we're going to correct whatever the problem is that we have at hand which a lot of times with a phone call is going to be a lot more productive, like you said, than just yeah. a, a simple text message. But I always think that it's important to, to make sure that you lay out that, that, uh, those ground rules uh, at, the, at the onset of that relationship. Like a text message in my brain should be like four sentences or less. Right. If it has to be more than four sentences, call me yeah. or email me. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. um, so to, uh, to, how do we correct any negative uh, stereotypes that consumers or the media may use against us. You briefly touched on it, um, but there's a lot of neg negative stereotypes that are sort of floating around out there now. So do, what do we do to combat those? So when you move to a community, you're often the realtor is the first person that someone meets. When you leave a community, sure. they're the last person that you see. So really being our community ambassadors, we're doing it anyway. We're just not telling people about it. Right. So we serve on nonprofits, right? Where we give back to charity all the time. We're invested in our communities. Unfortunately, what we post on social media, when I say we collectively, I know not all of us, but what we post on social media is boastful oftentimes yep. rather than community supported. Right. Um, so we need to change our own behavior first and foremost, mm -hmm. and then the others will follow. Um, when we talk about attorneys, right, and a doctor or an attorney, you respect those professions. Why? Because they act accordingly. They're not posting things about how much money they're making. They're not posting things about how many clients they've served over a million dollars this year or whatever. They're worried about the consumer, or at least that's the way that they're they're posing themselves to the public. Sure. So we need to do a better job, first and foremost, to really put ourselves in a good light. Post yourself serving at the St. Francis House homeless people meals. Post yourself doing those things. The beach Not, lineups, the habitat builds, the whatever you're doing, Kwan's right. Rotary, any of those civic organizations. Yeah. Post that you went to the city commission meeting to find out what's going on in the neighborhood because you're the community expert. Right. Don't post yourself taking crazy vacations all the time and getting new cars. Yeah. That, right. Yeah, true. Or or I sold the house in one day over asking. Yes. <laughs> one day over asking. Easy. Multiple yeah. offers. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so to, uh, to Maya Angelou said this regarding readiness, and it's nice to know that you are always at the ready for us. Um, I've learned that you shouldn't go through life with a catcher's mitt on both hands. You need to be able to throw something back. What does that mean to you? So let's be honest, you get out what you put in. So you can't always take, right? And there's in our profession, we have so many opportunities to do cool things, to learn great things, but you have to give it back to you. You can't take everything that someone offers you without pouring yourself into our profession back. Right. So to me, that's what it really means. It's, it's give it back. Don't just always take. Um, and I think that as leaders, you're a great testament to this. We really give back to our profession for everybody, right? There's a Absolutely. handful of us that lead and serve, but it really benefits all 242,000 of us. Absolutely. Um, and so we've learned how to pitch that back. We're not always catching the balls. We're throwing it back. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you do such an incredible, uh, such an incredible job with that. And you, and you hit the nail on the head. The whole giving back. And I love that you said pouring yourselves into the community um, or pouring yourselves into our membership. That's, that's something that I hear Tim say all the time. Um, and it's so true. You, you we are so lucky to be in the positions that we're in and uh, be able to uh, 
uh, provide for our families in the industry that we're in. And the more that you give back and the more that you show how much you care about the community, the more that you show how much you care about the members really makes it a better place for everyone. And in the end, without it even being the reason why we're doing what we're doing, it all ends up coming back to you. So just keep on giving. Yep. Keep on giving. And the more that you give, the more people realize that you're not just out there trying to make a quick buck. You're trying to build a community. You're trying to make sure that everybody's got a roof over their head with our advocacy efforts, going to Tallahassee. We're all going to be heading out, going to D.C. I mean, all of these things that we do. I'm not going to D.C. to party. I'm going to D.C. to work. That's right. I mean, it, and all of us are working the whole time that we're there. Um, it's 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 amazing to um, to be part of this profession. It's amazing to be, to be part of the the leadership in the state of Florida. Um, and thank you for all that you're doing to give back. Absolutely. You always got to lead from a place of being genuine, right? And if you're not, people will see right through that. So do it because you love it, not because someone asked you to. Absolutely. Um, I know that you've got to uh, get back to work. So we're going to wrap things up with one more question. But if there's anything, uh, I'm just going to open the floor to you, Madam President. Okay. If there's anything that you want our members to hear about anything going on in real estate, their life of service, uh, whatever it is that uh, you'd like to to tell them, the floor is yours. So we have a lot of advocacy things coming up. I know that we've talked about insurance briefly. I want you to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We passed some amazing legislation in 2022, and we're already seeing fruits of that labor starting to pay off. I know it's slow, it's slow. but it is getting there. And I think we're seeing more insurers come back to the state. Eight new insurers this awesome. year, right? Um, so that's amazing. But I think for us, we have to set ourselves up as a professional and tell the consumers, this is what's happening. You are going to start seeing reductions. You are going to start seeing more competition. Um, so that's really important. And then right now, we actually have a call for action out. Hopefully, it uh, will be wrapped up. But Senate Bill 280, which is the vacation rental bill, right. very important right now um, because it threatens private property rights and the ability to rent out your properties. So huge for uh, the state of Florida. Could also limit the total amount of occupancy uh, for a rental unit. Okay. So Senate Bill 280 is definitely something to keep your eye on. We hope that the governor will sign that veto. Um, other than that, just engage with your association. There is no bigger cheerleader for the realtor brand or the realtor champion than your local association. That's true. So give back, participate, and if they ask you to do something, answer with a willingness to help. Right. And uh, for you guys that are listening, uh, what G is talking about with Senate Bill 280, uh, you have all, all of you, if you are a Florida Realtors member, you have received a call to action. You've received several emails. You have received text messages. It is so easy to click that link and make your voice heard. And if you think that these things don't matter, I can assure you they absolutely matter. They absolutely help. Uh, our legislators do listen when they are completely bombarded by these emails. Um, and it's as simple as logging into uh, or just uh, opening up that email, clicking two buttons and you are done. The email has been sent on your behalf. It's already auto-populated. Uh, so make sure that you do uh, respond to that call to action because it is hugely important for all of us Floridians. Um, so I'm gonna let you uh, get back to it. Uh, I like to ask this question of all of our uh, podcast guests. Florida has many, many hidden gems, uh, whether it's a restaurant, beach, hotel, um, park. You give us something uh, that you love. Obviously, you've been traveling all around the state, so I'm sure that you must have uh, seen something new, or maybe it's a hometown favorite. You're from Gainesville. Uh, let us know what uh, what sort of hidden gem you love about living in the state of Florida. So I'm from Gainesville, but we vacation all the time in St. Augustine. Okay, I've been to St. Augustine a million times, but I had never been to Washington Oaks. It's okay. on the south side of St. Augustine. It's a park. A park. And they have Granddaddy Oaks that literally the limbs go all the way and dip all the way down to the ground and out. It's the most beautiful tree really? canopy I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Um, they have the Sounds beach. like a banyan. It's a, yes. Very similar. Okay. So they have the beach on one side, the intercoastal on the other. Okay. And this is just a park of trees. I probably saw 50 families doing family photos oh, wow. in this park when I was there had never been to it, never heard of it, and was going to Flagler, actually, association for an event. And I had some extra time and I saw it and I thought, I'm gonna stop here. What a great stop. Okay, very interesting. I love that you did uh, our uh, training um, in St. Augustine. I had never been there. What a gorgeous city 
So cool. And it's a great foodie city. It is. There were tons of great restaurants that we uh, had visited while we were there. A uh, great music city, too. Great That's music a live city. Music. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm certainly going to uh, check that out next time I am up in St. Augustine. But thank you so much for being with us. And thank you, uh, thank you for the job that you're doing. Your, you, your passion for our members um, is, is certainly seen every single day. And I know what uh, how, the amount of time that you are spending uh, traveling the state and making sure that uh, you're hearing our members' voices. And uh, on behalf of everybody here at Our World, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for what you're doing. Thank you. I'm happy to do it. I appreciate you. Okay, guys, we will uh, see you right back here next time on Our World Talk. That was our Florida Realtors president, Gia Arvin. See you next week. Thank you.